Hey, welcome back to How to Barbecue Right. I'm Malcolm Reed. Today I'm gonna to be doing brisket on my new stick burner pit. We're gonna jump right in, get this brisket on some fire. Let's get to cooking. First, let's talk brisket. I'm starting with the USDA Prime Whole Packer brisket. Now that whole packer, it has the flat and the point. It's all connected together by this decal of fat that runs all through it. And I'm gonna cook it whole today on my stick burner. Now I do wanna do just a quick trim on it, really taking some of the excess fat off. I'm gonna get some of the sinew off the top. We're gonna to take some of that decal down, kind of round off the edges on it. And then on the point end, we're just gonna take, remove some of the fat, expose some of that meat, because I wanna create a nice bark on the outside. Now on the flat, it does. it's gonna have some sinew. It's gonna have a little layer of fat on it and just use a sharp knife. Go slow and just slowly peel it off. On the back side, you want to take the fat down to about a quarter inch. If it has a hump in it, we're going to cut that hump out so the brisket will lay flat when it's cooking because however you start is how it's going to finish. I also kind of take off any oxidized meat that's on the edge. Real easy, just take your knife, cut right behind it, make a straight cut right down the edge. And we just want to make it into a nice brisket shape. So I have equal parts, coarse ground black pepper and kosher salt in this shaker here. And I'm just getting a good layer on it. This is gonna be my foundation. Now you could just run this right here. It makes a great brisket, but I wanna get a little bit of barbecue flavor to it too. So I'm just gonna use some of my hot rub right on top. So we're not gonna rub the brisket. I'm just gonna pat that salt and pepper in just a little bit with a gloved hand. Now on top of that, we're just going with a light layer hot barbecue rub. You can use your favorite rub here. Hey, if you've got a brisket rub you like, by all means, go for it. Give that a pat. Man, that looks good right there. Now we're gonna flip it over, get the meat side. Bam. Same thing, salt and pepper combo first. We're gonna give it a light barbecue rub, hot rub. So first thing this morning, I put some B&B &B charcoal in the charcoal basket in the stick burner and just got a good bed of coals going. Now wood's gonna be our primary source. I've got some hickory splits that I'm gonna use today for those BTUs, for that smoke flavor, but you gotta have a foundation. You have to have that base of charcoal to get it going. Right now we're up to about 300 degrees because I've got the vent wide open. It's time to put a stick on. So I'm gonna put my first piece of pecan on there. I'm just laying one on. Got it right on the hot bed of coals immediately it's going to go to producing heat. You're going to see some light smoke, but with these stick burners, it's very faint. You talk about thin blue smoke, this is where it comes from. We'll shut the door and I'm just going to leave the vents open for now. We'll adjust them as the cook goes on as needed. So you can see we're sitting on 300 degrees right out. That's 12 o'clock on the Jambo dial here. I've got the exhaust vent at about the three o'clock position. That was just to get it started. That's open. That's drawing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kick it back to about five, four or five o'clock, something like that. That's going to lock it down it's going to take that temp down to about 275 which is optimal temperature for what i want to cook the brisket at today now we're ready to get the brisket on the pit get to cooking i don't know if you can see it but old jolene set in right about 275 and it was just not even five minutes from when I adjusted the damper up there. We're ready to get this first brisket on the pit. I'm trying to keep it about the dial because I know that's about 275 right in there. So what I'm gonna do is put the point in more towards the firebox. So I'm gonna set the brisket in here kind of midways and I've got the point towards the firebox. It's gonna be a little hotter on that end, I know, but I want that point, it's fattier. I need to render that fat. We're gonna get some color on this brisket before we wrap it up in butcher paper. Now I'm just gonna get the lid closed. Let old Jolene work her magic here. We're gonna see what this Jambo does to a brisket. So the briskets have been rolling now about an hour, and now it's time to start checking the fire because we're gonna put a stick on about every 45 minutes to an hour. You can see the ones we started with have burnt down, gave off all that heat they're going to. So I'm just gonna throw another one on. So the stick burn is producing good, even heat. I'm not opening up the chamber at all because I, I wanna let the meat cook. If you're looking, you're not cooking. But what you do have to do is add that wood. It's gonna keep it stable. It's gonna run smooth. Don't walk away from it. That's the only challenge of this. About every hour, I'm adding wood. So now it's been about five hours into this brisket cook. It's got some good color on it. And take a look at it. You can see the bark's form. Point's looking great. Flax got beautiful color over the top of it. We're gonna go ahead and get it wrapped. Now I've got some butcher paper laid out over there. You could wrap it in aluminum foil, but I really like the texture that wrapping in that butcher paper gives brisket. But I'm just gonna take this double layer butcher paper, bring up over it. Then I'm gonna kind of fold the edges around the point there. Fold it up. Then we're just gonna wrap it over, make sure it's tight, flip it back. That looks good to me. I'm gonna go ahead and get a meat probe. 
stuck in the flat there. You just want to go about halfway in, that way we know what the internal temperature is going to be. We're going to get this right back on the pit. I'm just going to set it back about approximately the same spot. Point still facing the firebox. Get her closed back up. So you can see we're about 174 internal when we wrap. We've still got a little bit of stall to cook through. The butcher paper is going to help us push through that. It's going to keep that bark nice, crispy. It's still a long cook, still several more hours. Once we get up around 200 degrees, I'll take that brisket off and then we're going to rest it and I'll get to try some stick burner brisket. All right, you can see our signals telling us we're hit 204 internal, but I brought my thermo pin because I want to check it. Even though we've hit that final target temperature, you always want to verify it. So what I'm going to do is just go in somewhere close to where the probe is, see how it feels. It felt good. And we're seeing 202, 203, right center of that flat. That's perfect. I mean, this brisket's ready to come off. Now, it's not ready to unwrap. We're still gonna hold it, but I can also feel it. I mean, this brisket feels loose, losing some juice out of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it in a metal pan. All right, so we're not gonna vent the brisket. I'm gonna leave it wrapped up. I've got a dry cooler over here. I'm gonna set the pan down in it. I'm gonna give it a couple hours before we unwrap it, before I try it. I know this is the hardest part to do, but you absolutely have to let that brisket rest. If you cut into it now, you're gonna lose all that juice and you don't want that. I want it to be really juicy. I know it's gonna be tender. It's gonna have a ton of flavor. I can't wait, but I'm gonna give it two hours. So I let the brisket rest in the cooler for about two hours. And now this is what I've been working on all day. I'm gonna get to try it. I wish y'all was here with me. We're gonna unwrap this brisket. Look at that. Oh, it's beautiful. It's juicy. Wow. I mean, that just is a thing of beauty right there. Now, that's what I call a stick burner brisket. So now we're gonna cut this thing up and check that out. I'm gonna turn it a little bit, but just look at that jiggle that brisket has. And I'm just gonna take one of my slicing knives here. And we're gonna start here on the, on the tip of the flat, cutting it about a quarter inch, just like you would. Oh man, it's cutting like a dream. Get into those money slices here in a second. You can cut it thick and thin as you like. I like it about a quarter inch. You want a good piece of brisket. Let's pull one out here. I mean, look at that. That is fantastic. Got a little bit of the fat on bottom. We got smoke ring on both sides. Not falling apart, but when you give it a tug, it just comes right apart. Mm. Wow. I'm not hoping the camera, you can see how much moisture is left in this brisket when I cut it. Look at this. I mean, that is awesome. Get a few more slices off the flat here. Oh, man. Just look at that. Look at that. That's gonna be the, that's gonna be the best eating right there. You know it is. Mmm. It's so tender. When you pull it, it just comes right apart. If you don't think that brisket's tender right there, I mean, it, those pieces are just practically clapping together, but it's not breaking. But when I pick it up and pull it, it's coming right apart. I mean, that's textbook money brisket. Now let's talk about the fatty end. Now this is where it's really good. You can always see a little bit of fat in there, but when you push it, it's just got all that moisture. And now we're gonna slice up some of this fatty end. Y'all know I gotta try it. That's where it's at, right there. My favorite part, the point end of the brisket where all that fat's rendered. Mm. Just melts in your mouth. Just melts in your mouth. And this is truly what the burn end of a brisket is. It's those outer edges of point that get all that caramelized seasoning, all that fat around the outside, and then you've got all that rendered meat right on the inside and then you just cut it up into cubes. So we've got our fatty end of our brisket sliced up. We've got a, some burn ends. We've got some more of the point sliced up. You can make some chopped beef sandwiches with that. We've got all that beautiful flat that's sliced with the smoke ring all around it. Hey, this jambo brisket ain't no joke. So for this brisket today, it was all about cooking on a stick burner. We ran it at 275 the whole cook. 
I fed it a stick every 45 minutes and I was using pecan wood. For the brisket, we kept it simple. I trimmed the fat down to a quarter inch, just got that big deckle of fat off of it, rounded it off, made it nice and flat. Then we seasoned it with that salt and pepper blend. It was equal parts, black pepper, kosher salt, hit it with a little bit of hot rub on top and all the sides just for a little color. And then we cooked it till it was done. Once we got that bark just right on the outside, we wrapped it in butcher paper so it would preserve all of that crunchy goodness on the outside. Then we let it rest. Don't forget that. And you can have some awesome brisket just like this. And this recipe today was really all about me learning my stick burner and trying to duplicate some killer, killer brisket off that style pit. If you don't have a stick burner, you can do the same thing. Just keep those temps at 275, get it wrapped when it has some color on it, and finish it out and rest it. It's that simple. Thanks for watching us today at How to Barbecue Right. If you like what we're doing, subscribe to our channel. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. You can also listen to the podcast once a week, and we're doing a new video podcast as well. We're going to have all all of that on the YouTube channel. We'll see y'all next time.